This video is brought to you by Ten, our debut hardcover book celebrating ten issues of the local project. Use the code Book Five at checkout for a five percent discount. We live at a time where the human presence is usually much larger than the natural landscape. And so to be in a natural landscape that's much larger than the human, I think is a relief. And I know when I come here, I feel my heart rate drop. I feel this sense of renewal. That was such an important component of the project to really be able to experience the site and really be connected to the site. My name is Joanne Koch. I am the architect for the Sea Ranch Forest Retreat, and it's also my own home. The Sea Ranch Forest Retreat is in the community of Sea Ranch, which is about 100 miles north of San Francisco. It's a beautiful, rugged coastline, and then there's grasslands that come up on a shelf up to the forest. So the Sea Ranch community was started in the early 60s and the concept was to live in a regenerative environment where the land was first and the buildings were set into the land, not on the land. And what is particular about this site and unique is that it gets a lot of sunlight and also because of the light, there's a pretty vibrant understory of plants. So it's just a beautiful uh, local landscape. It's very lush almost all year round. As you first arrive, you walk between two towering redwoods onto the entry deck. And as you come through the sliding glass door, you're set in a two-story atrium with a stair going up and double height windows. And you just have this feeling that you need to look up into the trees. Over your head is a suspended catwalk that connects the two loft spaces. And then as you walk to the left, you come into the combined kitchen, dining, and living room space. And again, you turn 90 degrees, and boom, there's the view. And then the private wing has two bedrooms, and you have sliding doors out onto a deck. So what was originally built on the site is the exact footprint that we have kept and what it is today. And it was built by the same architect, William Turnbull, as Condominium One. And I just always really appreciated the way that he used very simple forms to create evocative and interesting compositions. So I wanted to keep the same proportion and scale and rhythm of the building, but I felt that there were opportunities in the house that needed to be evolved and changed and developed and to have larger apertures in small scale rooms. And that is really, I think, such a wonderful feeling because you have a sense of coziness and a sense of vastness. And so the interior experience of the house actually echoes the exterior experience where you're held by the forest, but you have the vastness of the view. I guess you could say the client was in a way the guest because one of the ways in which 
this all worked for us is to be able to share it. The other thing that I think was a really strong part of the brief was if we were going to take this project on, we were matching the materials that you could get in 1974, and that's a pretty hard thing to do today. And so we felt a responsibility to uh, really honor that and not only honor it, but really go to the end of the earth <laughs> to find the, uh, the right materials that the home deserved. So here in Sea Ranch, there are explicit rules around the slope of a roof, around the grading, around the size of a building. And one of the things that the rules uh, require is for all decks to have 18 inches of solid material and only be open at the top. So as you're looking up from the trail, you don't see a lot of deck furniture and things like that. So there are a lot of rules, but the ones that pertain to this project, I actually agreed with them all, and I've become very grateful for the rules that Sea Ranch has. I actually don't want to see a pink house in the forest, so I love the fact that all the homes have to be a natural color and a shade of gray, and that protection creates a sense of community and really binds a community together. And not only that, but it binds the architecture together. And I think that that's a good thing. So the material palette was really developed based on the natural all wood interior paneling that was here, the natural sugar pine. I just love the amber tones of it. And so for the kitchen, that's really the place where we brought in different materials that were in sync with the amber paneling. And I chose a bluish gray sort of metallic base for the cabinets and then I wanted to bring in a little bit of the forest color and so uh, we brought a mossy green color and then in the bathrooms we wanted to keep a rustic but refined sense to them so the detailing is very precise and when the sun hits it it just has a wonderful glow to it so what I'm most proud of about the project is that we did a lot of work and it looks like we did nothing. This video is brought to you by 10, our debut hardcover book celebrating 10 issues of the local project. 10 unites the very best projects from the first 10 issues of the publication into a beautiful single volume. With over 400 pages of architecture and design from both leading and emerging creatives, the hardcover book takes readers on a curated and meditative journey. The premium paper stock of the book means 10 is an enduring addition to a coffee table or library to be enjoyed for years to come. With worldwide delivery available, have 10 delivered directly to your door. Head to the link in the video description to purchase your copy now and use the code BOOK5 at checkout for a 5% discount.